Attention Institute personnel. This investigation is not intended to be an accurate history and overview of the Human Covenant War. It is instead a reimagining, a hypothetical service history for a unit created by the Templin Institute. If you missed the process behind its creation, a link to that video can be found in the description. And if after this investigation you decide you wouldn't mind representing the honor of the Holy Rollers, we'll have some merchandise, including detailed posters illustrating the entire regiment, available for a limited time on the Templin Commissary starting this weekend. Stay tuned after this investigation for further information. When viewed from the air, London, like most of the great cities of Earth, appears to have recovered quickly from the worst ravages of the Human Covenant War. The wrecks of vehicles that clogged its streets are long gone. Neighborhoods that were reduced to molten glass have blossomed into parks and gardens. And the shattered skyscrapers that burned until the horizon turned red rise proudly again over a city, a world, and a species whose survival only a few decades ago seemed no longer certain. To walk London's streets, however, is to find all the traces of the war that have yet to be swept away. Hundreds of buildings still bear the telltale scars of urban warfare, their foundations riddled by bullet holes and shell damage, or deformed by the effects of superheated plasma. It is the endless memorials, however, in which the pain of the war is reflected most deeply. From the hastily inscribed names and dates that mark seemingly every surface, to the national monuments that have grown famous as symbols of grief and resilience. Yet, for every sacrifice honored and every life remembered, countless others are forgotten. Where thousands gather daily to pay their respects beneath the pillars of remembrance that stand in Hood Square, or stand at the sunken remnants of the HMS Belfast. Few are even aware of the simple plaque that lies at the end of Bermondsey Street, just a scant few minutes away. It was in this unremarkable place, on November 21st, 2552, as London burned and the fighting raged, that a regiment of the Army of United Nations Space Command was wiped out to a man. The official records list this unit as the first ARCT of the 34th Armored Division, the plaque on Bermondsey Street identifies them as the Holy Rollers. In the autumn of 2538, the 34th Armored Division was one of the many units left battered and bloodied in the opening stages of what would become known as the Siege of the Outer Colonies. Recalled to the world of New Carthage, remnants of the division were consolidated into the 1st Armored Regimental Combat Team, allowing the remainder of the 34th to rebuild and recuperate. Combat teams like the one formed from the 34th were intended by the UNSC to be units of action, flexible combined arms forces that could be rapidly deployed to reinforce UNSC defenses or support an ongoing breakthrough. As the UNSC struggled to adapt to the Covenant's rapid advance and genocidal tactics, however, the first ARCT remained as something of a garrison force on New Carthage. It spent its initial few months recuperating and training to use the newly introduced M35 Cougar Infantry Fighting Vehicles. Overall command of the regiment was temporarily assigned to Colonel Aria Hall, but before a more seasoned replacement could be found, the unit was hurriedly redeployed in 2539 to the world of Kolo, where a planetary front against the Covenant was rapidly developing. By the time of the regiment's arrival in system, the Covenant had achieved near-orbital supremacy over the planet, but enough gaps in their perimeter remained for the unit to be landed without incident. Within only two hours of their deployment, elements of the first ARCT were already in contact with the enemy, reinforcing defensive lines surrounding the Hoffman Memorial Spaceport. Though Colonel Hall had failed to make much of an impression as an officer up to this point, and had far less combat experience than nearly all of the soldiers she commanded. As a regimental CO, she displayed an intuitive grasp of the intricacies of urban combat. Without room in the dense city streets to conduct the kinds of rapid cross-country advances for which the formation had been designed, Hall instead resorted to increasingly innovative, 
and at times, bizarre tactics. Multiple times during the defense of the spaceport, the regiment's armored battalions performed what appeared to be suicidal thunder runs into Covenant positions deeper in the city, only to breach their lines and devastate their rear supply areas. Hall had correctly assessed the Covenant on Colo to be far less practiced in armored warfare and reliant on orbital bombardment rather than tactical acumen to achieve results. In one astonishing engagement, Hall completely disregarded prevailing UNSC Army doctrine to launch a competing armored thrust directly into the Covenant's own attempt to flank the city. The Great Joust of Colo, as the engagement came to be known, saw the Covenant's far larger armored spearhead blunted and then cut in half by the first ARCT. Thousands of enemy vehicles were destroyed in the ensuing rout, one of the most disproportionate losses ever inflicted on Covenant ground forces during the war. Despite these successes, with the UNSC Navy unable to reinforce the star system and contest the orbital battle space above Colo, the eventual triumph of the Covenant was all but inevitable. The regiment's strength was slowly ground down until only a fraction of its vehicles remained in operation. Even as the evacuation orders were given, the regiment was tasked with one final objective, to locate and secure a relic believed to be forerunner in origin that had been discovered in a small community in the surrounding foothills. Harnessing the last remaining combat strength left to the regiment, a final run was made across the ash flats and the relic secured. Though the fighting was intense for the entirety of the operation, it was the method used to transport the relic back to the spaceport that would earn the regiment its reputation and name. With its lighter vehicles unable to navigate the increasingly glassed regions of Colo, the relic was strapped to the barrel of Quiet Riot, one of the assembled battle group's last remaining tanks. Doing so appeared to horrify the Covenant forces who witnessed it, yet they appeared entirely unwilling to fire upon Quiet Riot and risk damaging the relic in the process. As they prepared to make the final run back to Hoffman Memorial, crude replicas of the relic were strapped to the barrel of every vehicle in the battle group in the hopes the Covenant would be unable to tell the difference. The degree to which the ruse was successful is unknown, but the group succeeded in making it back to the spaceport and evacuating the system, along with the last survivors of the regiment. Though the actions of the first ARCT in retrieving the relic were considered only a minor success by the UNSC, largely overshadowed by the glassing of Colo, their effects throughout the Covenant were far more profound. Word of the relic's treatment reached the hierarchs of the Covenant themselves and was considered to be one of the most grievous acts of heretical desecration ever inflicted upon a sacred object of their faith. Though not among the force that retrieved the artifact, Colonel Hall became one of the few UNSC personnel to be directly named by the Covenant. She was given an ignominious title that roughly translated to she who feasts on the feculence of all that walks, crawls, and slithers. The Hierarchs additionally placed a bounty on Hall, one of the largest ever issued, and another was levied against the soldiers of the first ARCT as a whole. In response, Colonel Hall's command vehicle was given the name of Shit Eater, and the regiment adopted the name it would carry for the remainder of its existence, the Holy Rollers. Over the next decade, the first ARCT took part in the defense of numerous inner colonies, earning battle honors on Miradum, Actium, Paris IV, and Concord. Among its many achievements were the downing of a Covenant Sonaris pattern heavy destroyer in low orbit over New Linelli, and the nightmarish defense of the Highway to Hell, a critical supply route used by the regiment's support company to ferry desperately needed supplies to UNSC forces in Paris IV's capital city. After Colonel Hall was reassigned to an administrative position elsewhere in the 34th Armored Division, command of the Holy Rollers fell to her former XO, Tao Nguyen. A fierce proponent of his predecessor's unorthodox tactics, Nguyen was wholly committed to retaining the regiment's unique doctrine and esprit de corps. Nguyen himself implemented a total rethinking of UNSC camouflage and concealment. Under his command, the Holy Rollers became experts in luring Covenant armed formations 
into prepared fighting positions before quickly disengaging. During the Battle of Estuary, the regiment performed a maneuver many considered impossible, bridging and then crossing three major rivers to appear unexpectedly on the Covenant's flanks. Despite these successes, the nature of the conflict meant that most operations involving the first ARCT ended in hurried evacuations when the further defense of a world became untenable. In such cases, the complete withdrawal of the Holy Rollers was not always possible. Like so many other units in the UNSC army, there were multiple instances across its history in which large sections of the regiment were left behind on planets in the process of being glassed or destroyed in orbit when Covenant warships overtook their fleeing transports. April 22nd, 2552 was considered one of the blackest days in the regiment's history when the entire combat engineering battalion and a field artillery battery were annihilated during the final hours of the Battle of Fumarol. Losses taken at Fumarol and elsewhere had eroded much of the regiment's strength by the summer of that same year. In June, it was recalled to the headquarters of the 34th Armored Division on Reach, where it was to be disbanded and its veteran soldiers redistributed across the division's other regiments to shore up newer, greener units that had recently been inducted. The 34th would then have been the center point of the UNSC Army's efforts to hold Estegem once the long-anticipated Covenant invasion of Reach was underway. By chance, however, the Holy Rollers were still in slipspace when the fall of Reach occurred, and it was rerouted to Earth to take part in what many believed would be the last stand of the human race. The remainder of the division was wiped out on Reach, their role in the battle entirely unknown. With its parent division destroyed and the UNSC's situation increasingly desperate, the Holy Rollers were deployed to France to take part in training and replenishment. As Earth's industrial base and logistics networks were moved off-world, however, replacement equipment and personnel arrived only sporadically. When the Covenant entered the solar system on October 20th, the Holy Rollers were believed to have still been widely under strength, particularly in its field artillery battalion. UNSC archives that survived into the post-war era state the last recorded action of the 1st ARCT, 34th Armored Division, as having occurred on November 2nd, 2552, where it was listed among several units preparing to counterattack Covenant landing sites in the Netherlands. Yet, through eyewitness reports and statements from surviving UNSC personnel, the legacy of the Holy Rollers continues beyond these official records. Thousands of corroborating accounts include the Holy Rollers as having participated in the Battle of London when the city was attacked by elite Jirolhane Butcher Packs. According to these accounts, Tao Win was still alive and active in the regiment during the fighting, but had taken personal command of the 2nd Combined Arms Battalion. The regiment itself was once again commanded by his former CO, Brigadier General Arya Hall. Hall was reportedly one of several hundred former members of the Holy Rollers that had reunited with the regiment while it was in France. Many were no longer active UNSC personnel, having been retired for years, but nevertheless had rushed to rejoin the Holy Rollers in preparation for the Battle of Earth. Though no two accounts are entirely identical, making any attempt to track its final actions difficult, the first ARCT appears to have taken positions on the southern bank of the River Thames. Between November 15th and 19th, it disrupted several attempted crossings of the river, firing on Covenant vehicle columns as they tried to cross the ruins of Southwark Bridge. When the Covenant units finally succeeded in crossing the river, Townwyn was reported to have transformed the devastated London Bridge Station into a labyrinth of concealed fighting positions, ambushing Covenant vehicles at point-blank range as they moved into the South Bank. Remnants of the UNSC Marine Corps and Army units were likewise said to have been incorporated into the regiment at this time. Both Covenant and UNSC sources recorded a major event in the fighting on November 20th, at precisely the location where the Holy Rollers were believed to have been deployed. Though its exact nature is obfuscated by conflicting accounts, all sources agree that the Covenant suffered some cataclysmic setback. The most agreed-upon narrative is that a Jeralhane Warmaster, 
believing the South Bank to have been fully cleansed of UNSC forces, began moving his heavier equipment en masse across the Thames, taking advantage of the Covenant's advanced anti-gravity technology. Thousands of vehicles were said to be involved in the crossing, including twelve Deuteros Patton Scarabs, the backbone of a Covenant spearhead intending to outflank UNSC units further to the west. To the astonishment of the Covenant, however, their forces that had been holding the South Bank simply evaporated under renewed UNSC firepower. Rather than a reinforced, friendly beachhead on the far side of a river, Covenant forces were now attempting the crossing under the mass firepower of tanks, artillery, and even hastily repurposed orbital defense artillery. The lead and rearmost scarabs were targeted and destroyed in the opening volley, trapping the remainder in a narrow column between the burning wrecks. Hundreds of the Covenant's lighter vehicles, caught in the open, gliding over the river without any form of cover, were likewise systematically destroyed. For the next 40 hours, the South Bank of London was subjected to precise plasma bombardment from orbit. After each volley, the crossing would resume, only for concealed UNSC positions in the rubble to again open up and decimate the Covenant forces. Finally, the crossing was abandoned, and on November 21st, widespread orbital bombardment was used to reduce the entire area to glass. A charred M808 Scorpion, bearing the insignia of the Holy Rollers, was later found among the ruins, guarding a section of what had once been Bermondsey Street. No survivors from the first ARCT, or any other unit in the South Bank, were ever found. As an armored regimental combat team, the Holy Rollers were one of several hundred largely identical units deployed throughout the Human Covenant War. It consisted of eight battalions, three combined arms, and one cavalry, artillery, air defense, combat engineering, and regimental support battalion. Heavy losses incurred throughout its campaigns, however, meant the regiment rarely operated at full strength. An unusual addition to the combat team was the presence of two full Spartan teams. Though the records of Spartan deployments during the war remain classified, within the UNSC Army, it was rumored that these teams had personally requested to be attached to the Holy Rollers, following the Battle of Kolo. What truly distinguished the first ARCT of the 34th Armored, however, was its unique culture and esprit de corps. Nicknames, kill markings, and insignia of a kind that existed in nearly every UNSC Army unit were taken extremely seriously in the Holy Rollers. In addition to the custom camouflage patterns that adorned every vehicle in the regiment, vehicle crews were known to customize their vehicles with hand-painted artwork, jokes, or famous sayings within the regiment. Totems and good luck symbols were also prevalent, and treated with an almost superstitious reverence. When not in combat, the Holy Rollers were said to have performed elaborate ceremonies and hazing rituals. These were conducted in great secrecy, though stories of officers dressed in vestments and clerical clothing, performing exorcisms on new personnel, and other, far more bizarre rumors, followed the regiment throughout its service. Even in the post-war era, former and retired members of the Holy Rollers, some of whom had since been elevated to high-ranking positions within the UNSC, have refused to elaborate on the nature of these ceremonies. The regiment was also famous for its cynicism and gallows humor. Much of this was owed to Arya Hall, who entirely ignored UNSC manuals on how to create a positive command climate. While the UNSC to this day attempts to instill a sense of purpose and unity by invoking the concepts of hope, belief, metaphors of light and darkness, and other inspirational rhetoric, the Holy Rollers adopted a different approach. Colonel Hall was infamous for her distinctive communication style, one that emphasized directness, confidence, vivid imagery, and aggressive, almost intimidating rhetoric. This was all laced with an extreme focus on profanity and other colorful language. A now infamous exchange with a civilian journalist exemplified the regiment's unique culture. When asked if her tankers could inspire the same kind of hope across the UNSC as the Spartan super soldiers, Hall reportedly replied, Hope. This is the army, son. My only job is to pour the fiery piss of humanity into those poor, dumb, purple bastards. UNSC officials would later demand that several tanks across the regiment named some variation of fiery piss 
in honor of Hall's comment, be renamed to something less vulgar. This is believed to have been the only instance of such demands across the entire 27-year war against the Covenant. While such incidents gave the regiment a rather negative reputation within the UNSC, often derided as cowboys more interested in wrapping Christmas lights around their cannons than actually firing them, the performance of the first ARCT was exemplary. Though unusual, the culture promoted by Hall and expanded under Tao Nguyen fostered an extreme sense of identity and pride. The directness with which its officers spoke inspired trust throughout the ranks, and this candid, no-nonsense approach to leadership reassured the soldiers that they were being led by individuals who valued truth and transparency over false bravado or vague promises. The bonding rituals and symbolism practiced throughout the regiment also contributed to an above-average psychological resilience, with the unity and camaraderie of its soldiers holding under the most extreme situations and traumatic experiences. Even during the darkest moments of the war, the morale of the 1st ARCT, 34th Armored, was said to be among the highest in the UNSC Armed Forces. Though it has now been several years since its destruction in London, traces of the regiment's unique legacy can still, at times, be observed. Former members of the Holy Rollers, scattered across the UNSC or promoted to higher positions within its leadership, are said to conduct strange, elaborate salutes when encountering one another. Other regiments and divisions are said to be slowly incorporating some of Hall's and Wynn's methods, encouraging tank crews to name their vehicles and record kills to foster an aggressive mentality. But the greatest impact of the Holy Rollers remains known only to a few. In the aftermath of the Human Covenant War, a cabal of military intelligence and research agencies, think tanks, academic institutions, and members of the Office of Analysis and Evaluation performed a rigorous post-mortem review of the UNSC's wartime performance. Through the use of experimental AI, it was able to determine to what extent, if any, major formations in the armed forces contributed to the execution of the war. The review concluded that the actions of the first ARCT alone, assessed in isolation and regardless of any other UNSC units they were deployed alongside, effectively prolonged the war and delayed the Covenant's advance across the entire UNSC by 93 hours. Those 93 hours were credited with saving 8,767,000 lives. The Templin Institute is enormously proud to have partnered with the Museum of Humanity and the United Nations Space Command National Archives and Records Administration to produce a limited set of merchandise honoring the legacy of the Holy Rollers. If you'd like to get a set of posters detailing the entire structure of the regiment, or a shirt or hat featuring its logo, these will be available starting this Sunday, August 13th, over on the Templin Commissary, but only for a limited time. After one week, they'll vanish back into the UNSC archives. We'll post an update to our community page here on YouTube once they're available, so keep an eye out.